Welcome back, welcome back everyone. So as of today, the 2nd of October 2025, there is a brand new version of the Raspberry Pi OS. This is based on Debian 13. So I'm going to show you guys how to download it and how to write it to your SD cards. It's going to be exactly the same process as the older ones, but for anyone watching who hasn't done the old one before, you can follow along with this one. The first thing you're going to need is to download Raspberry Pi Imager. This is completely free. I'm going to put a link in the description where you can go and get it for any operating system that you have. So please go ahead and install that. The following steps will need Need Raspberry Pi Imager. Please do keep in mind this is not the only way to do it but in my opinion this is by far the best way to install it to an SD card. Okay so step one is to open the Raspberry Pi Imager and this is what you will see when you open it for the first time and the first thing you're going to choose here it says choose device so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to put mine into a Raspberry Pi 500 so for me I'm going to choose Raspberry Pi 5 the first option on the list. After that it says I need to choose the operating system so for me I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to where it says Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. As you can see there it says release the 1st of the 10th 2025 and it's roughly 1.2 gigabytes so I'm going to click on that one and then finally I'm going to choose storage. I'm going to plug my SD card in now. You're going to hear the Windows connection sound and you're going to see something pop up on screen. If and when you do that don't worry you can simply close it. Once you've plugged that in you're going to choose your storage. So I'm going to click on mine and the only option I have is the SD card I've plugged in. So I'm going to click on that one and from here I'm going to click on next. Next is going to ask me if I want to apply OS customization settings. So if I go to edit settings these are all the options that we can choose. So I can set my host name, I can set my username and password, I can set my wireless network from here. I can also go over to services and enable SSH. This is not something I'm going to need at the moment so I'm going to skip this and keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to close this down and simply go no. I'm going to choose yes. This is asking if I'm okay with wiping all the data from this. I'm going to choose yes. And from here on, I just have to wait for this to finish. I'll speed this part up and let you guys know once everything is completed and how to then set it up on the Raspberry Pi 5. I want to see if anything is different. So Raspberry Pi OS has now been written to the SD card. I'm going to click on continue. I'm going to close this down, shut this PC down and move over to my Raspberry Pi 500 so we can continue from there. All right, so here I am on my desk. This is a Raspberry Pi 500, not the 500 plus I've used in the past. I'm going to keep my SSD in a Raspberry Pi 500 plus and leave the SD card in a Raspberry Pi 500. So to get this in, all we have to do after you've written the OS to the SD card is simply lift it up like so, put this into the SD card slot here, squeeze it in until you hear a click and then I've added all my other cables. So this is Ethernet. This is my HDMI. That's my USB mouse. So this is the original Raspberry Pi 400 mouse. Then I'm going to simply add the power supply. That's coming on straight away. And I should have some video out. There we go. It's booting for the first time. All right. So here we are. It looks very similar to what we've had before. It doesn't seem like there has been many um, other options. So I'm going to click next. I've already got my IP address because I have my Ethernet cable plugged in. I'm going to click next. Uh, UK is fine. British English is fine. London is fine for me. So I'm going to go to next again. Here I'm going to enter my password for this device. So it's going to be runs tech hub for the username. And for the password, let me enter that. I'm going to click next. I don't actually need to choose any Wi-Fi. These two here are my Wi-Fi range extenders and that's my main Wi-Fi. I don't need to choose this now because again, I have an Ethernet cable plugged in. But if you get to this stage and you prefer to use Wi-Fi, which is very, very convenient by the way, and it works really well on this device, you go ahead and choose your Wi-Fi network and enter your password just like you would on a mobile phone or a tablet, then go next. But for me, I'm going to go to skip. The default browser I wish to use is going to be Chromium because that quickly and easily allows me to sign into my Google services. I'm going to tick this box here that says uninstall unused browser. What's going to happen is because I've chosen Chromium, Firefox is the alternative. So if I, it's going to uninstall Firefox and I believe all its dependencies as well, so I can get some storage back. I'm going to click next again to check for software updates. There shouldn't be many, if any at all, because this is the brand new version that came out yesterday, the 1st of October, 2025. System is up to date. I'm going to click OK. Now it's asking me to press launch to launch the desktop. This is new. This is something I haven't seen before. Typically, once you get to this stage, it asks you to restart or it takes you directly to desktop. But now it's asking to launch the desktop. So I'm going to click launch. Screen goes black. Go into desktop. All right, here we go. First impressions, the icons. I, I haven't read anything about this, but the icons straight away look a bit sharper to me. They look a bit more contrasty. They look a bit They look a bit easier on the eyes for me. I'm, my eyes are really, really bad. But straight away, I can tell that these are a bit sharper using the same monitor. I, I can see that the icons have slightly changed as well so the file manager icon didn't used to look like this before there's a darker folder at the back and a lighter folder at the front looks okay
okay looks better looks very bright i don't remember the icons having this shade of bright yellow looks very good very much the same thing not sure what's new other than the control panel thing i heard a few different icons here on the start menu as well this definitely looks different funny is the same but the, the built-in icons for this look slightly different and it seems as if there's less stuff installed which i like i've always not been a fan of loads of programs being installed this is the minimalist in installation anyway the first thing i wanted to check out was go down to preferences and go over to where it says control center this is a new thing that they've done i don't know what's in here so let me click into it and see what comes up and it doesn't seem like i have to restart anything after the update which is quite nice so defaults this is just the font stuff and we have the desktop as well i'm guessing this is going to be where you can change the color the text the the wallpaper display um screen blanking we have on-screen keyboard as well so that's if you use a touch screen next we have interfaces and the interfaces that people typically tend to use i'm going to turn on my ssh here so that when i try to connect to it from my windows pc it should work perfectly fine ssh for anyone that's not sure is a secure shell i can access this from any pc on the same network and sometimes across the networks if i have a vpn installed we have some keyboard settings here I'm not going to touch any of that after keyboard we have localization so that's your date time wi-fi keyboard stuff again mouse we have speed double click all of that good stuff there uh, under that we have performance not going to touch anything here under this we have printers and under that we have screens or displays i think this is a much cleaner much simpler start to it what i would recommend is they should have this on the desktop straight away so the first time you boot in the first time you start anything up this is what you're greeted with so you can go through and tweak your settings straight away i'm going to open funny and see what version of python is installed on here so we have version 3.13 i don't know what the latest version is so let's have a quick check let's check python 3 let's see what the latest version is 3.14 okay so we're so 3.13.5 is the latest version which came out in june so pretty up to date i would say that's quite nice just going to do a quick browser benchmark i've never done one of these before but i thought brand new operating system why not As I've said, I've never done one of these browser benchmarks before, and especially on the Raspberry Pi. So these are the details. These are the values you get so you can see where it roughly sits. Uh, doesn't mean much to me, but for people out there who are going to get a Raspberry Pi 400, 500 and simply use it for browsing stuff, because it is a nice cheap computer that you can take around quite easily. So if you're going to use it for browsing and doing stuff like that, you might care about these scores. Let me close this and let me check out some wallpapers now. So if I right click on the desktop, so on my desktop here, this is a new wallpaper. I think the previous version had someone on a boat on a river with a bluish background. So this is like a sunrise or a sunset. I'm gonna right click on here, go to desktop preferences and simply see what some of the wallpapers are. So straight away, it takes me to picture. I can choose sunrise. So let me click on sunrise and I can scroll through. Is there any way for me to preview this without actually choosing one? Um, no, do I have to choose one? Okay, seems like I have to choose it before I can see it. That's a decent one. So you have tons and tons of wallpapers here. Let me keep going through and see if I can, oh, I like this one. Nice bright green contrast. Yeah, I like this one. Not really my thing. Oh, city. And, oh, this is nice. This is very nice. Wow, all right. These wallpapers are, I don't know if this was in a previous version, but I like these very punchy, very vibrant, very clear. Clouds, no, not really for me. There isn't much more to see on this, so I'm simply going to close this out. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that was useful to someone. My next video is going to show how to update from the Raspberry Pi 5 or 500 or 400 directly. So I'm going to update on the system itself rather than writing a brand new system to an SD card. Stay tuned. That method is going to allow you to keep all your files and all your settings, whereas method I just did wipes everything. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.